Hello, I'm Bill Beekman, Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics at Michigan State University. Welcome to MSU Today. Uh, today's program, I'm joined by Norm Lowndes, the uh, Director of the uh, MSU uh, 4-H Children's Gardens, and uh, very excited to bring you some uh, behind-the-scenes information so that you uh, know about some of the great things that are going on at MSU. So, uh, uh, Norm, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. So now your official title is Associate Professor professor and Curator of the 4-H Children's Gardens. Yes, that is correct. And they sit within the uh, the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources within the, the Department of Horticulture, which makes sense. Um, can you Can you tell us how how they came about how the idea crystallized for the children's garden and and how it uh how it came to be okay sure um so it goes back to about 1987 88 someplace in there and the founding curator Jane Taylor who also worked for the Michigan 4H Foundation had the idea that she wanted to create a children's garden or a garden for children and what she meant by that was an idea that no one else had really had up until that time. So she wanted a place like a botanic garden, but one that was for kids so that when you went in it, you didn't just walk in and follow the pathways and all you could do was look at plants because God forbid that you ever touch anything um, or step on the grass even or that sort of thing. She was very... Um, tired of when parents with young children ask the children, well, where do you want to go? They would always say, well, we want to go to the zoo. Never did they say we want to go to the garden. So um, it took Jane, Jane had the ideas. It took her about five, well, it took her about three years to get the architects to understand what she was talking about because there was no model for it. There were other children's gardens, um, Brooklyn Botanic Garden has a children's garden, but it's set up that the kids get a small plot and then they plant what they want to in there and they take care of it. That's a whole different concept than what she had. And so when she, when she would talk to the architects about, well, I want to put in, for instance, a pizza garden, they would look at her like, okay, but I don't have a clue what that is. And so eventually with enough pictures, and if you ever met Jane, um, she could convince pretty much anybody of anything with enough talking. She got them to start to understand what her concept was. And when that happened, which took about three years, um, then the architects just had fun with it. And so they created a space that is unlike, at the time, unlike any other space that existed, there have been many copies of the 4-H Children's Garden since then, but we are the first true children's garden um, and it's located on MSU's campus, a wonderful place to visit. So that's the, the short version of the background. So you referenced the pizza garden. What's a pizza garden? Well, a pizza garden is a garden where a kid or an adult is going to be able to see all of the plants that make your pizza. But in order to make it so that it's immediately recognizable by children, the pizza garden is shaped like a pizza, so it's round. The crust on it is concrete, but it is rounded concrete, so the forms were taken off before the concrete was set. It was rounded. It has imprints in the concrete of tomatoes and onions and basil leaves. It also even has a piece cut out of it so that you can step in and be a part of the pizza. Oh, that's really cool. That's that's a lot of fun. Well, what one of one of my favorite parts of the children's garden is the uh, uh, the 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 Monet esque uh, bridge and the uh, you know the the sort of a water lily kind of area. I uh, it, that's just uh, really uh, really is to me very cool. That's a wonderful place, and it is our Monet Bridge. And there's two really interesting behind the scenes stories there. So the first one is that when the bridge was originally built, Jane wanted it to be as authentic as possible, even down to the color. So her daughter was going to be in France and was going to be visiting Monet's garden. So 
Jane said to her daughter, Chris, when you're there, reach down underneath the Monet, guard, the Monet Bridge and grab a piece of peeling paint and bring it back with you because I can take it into a paint store and they can scan it and we can get the exact color. So did that really uh, happen? That really happened. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's a that's a great story. And then the other really cool story is that as the wood began to rot, we talked to the physical plant about what could we could do. And they said, well, we have a program called MSU Shadows. And so anytime that trees are taken down on campus and buildings are taken down and that sort of thing, we try to recycle as much as possible. So we said, okay, that sounds interesting. So the new deck that is on the Monet Bridge is made from white oak that were originally growing on the northern part old campus. And when they were taken down, then they took them, cut them, dried them. And now that is the deck that you walk on as you go across the Monet Bridge. So what I tell our visitors is you are walking on wood that was here before MSU was even MSU. And that's just pretty cool. That is cool. That's a really neat story. It's um that's another program that uh people don't don't know a lot about, but whenever we have a tree that uh comes down on campus, particularly in the older part of campus, uh in the, the north uh north campus area, we save those and they're they're milled and uh and the wood is kept and it's either either used to to make furniture uh that that is in some of our buildings on campus or or as you say uh a decking for the Monet bridge or or other things but it's repurposed uh so that we can take that uh, very historic wood and uh and continue to see it uh, live on campus so that's that's a great story i was familiar with the program but not not relative to the bridge so that's that's pretty special so the the last time i was in the gardens was uh, so I have a uh, uh, children that are uh, that are now in uh, two of my three are now in college, and uh, and so East Lansing High School it seems as though whenever they have uh, their 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 prom all the kids go over to the children's garden and get pictures, and so the last time I was over at the children's garden was uh, was about a year ago when uh, w- with with probably a hundred and fifty decked out high school kids and their parents. But uh, but I know that there are many many other kids that enjoy the garden, and and so how, how do how do visitors uh, come to the garden, and and about how many folks do you think visit the garden each year? Well, you're exactly right that on uh, the evenings before prom in the spring, it's crazy out there. Um, I was out there a couple of years ago where it was basically a stream of limos going through, dropping people off, driving out, driving around for a while, coming back and picking them up. So um, it's a great place to to have prom photos. We also have very many of our MSU students that as they get ready to graduate, will come out and have their pictures taken. Um, So it's just a matter of coming out, the gardens are open, from sunup to sundowns, we don't have a gate that we can pull shut, so you can come out there anytime. Um, even this summer with COVID-19, I have seen kids out there, and some of them are high school, some of them are college, out there getting their pictures taken at least weekly all the way through the summer. Now, if we you look at the whole year, we have about 100,000, probably a little bit more than 100,000 visitors that come through the gardens. And then we do programs, and there are about 14,000 kids that come through the programs that we do. Wow. What, so what kind of programs do you do? You do? Summer, some, summer programs for young people or, or programs during the, the, the academic year for elementary school children or those kinds of things? or. What, what kind of programming works at the garden? Yeah, we have both of those. So in the summer, we have normally a, a series of programs that we call our family programs. And it is um, things like, well, we have a um, Mad Hatter tea party, for instance, where kids are encouraged to come dressed in their best Mad Hatter attire. And um, they have high tea. Well, we call it high tea, but they, have, they sit at tables with their parents and they are served. Um, hors d'oeuvres and they get to explore the garden and we have uh, 
in conjunction with physical plant, we've done a thing for the last few years called Digger Day. And Fizz Plant brings out all of their giant equipment and kids can climb up into a backhoe <clears throat> or a front end loader or a big old dump truck. And they just love that. We do train day and bug day and bubble day. So those are family programs. And it's really geared for the family to come out, enjoy the day. Well, actually, it's two hours from 10 till noon with your kids. Um, and then the other set of programs that we do are our school programs. And those are with school groups. Um, mostly it's pre-K through fifth grade. We get a little, once in a while we get a middle school group and occasionally get some high school students. And those are much more structured programs. Uh, one of them is called Seeds of Science and where the kids spend the entire day with us uh, involved in activities based in the garden and always based around plants. And then they have activities that they do back at school and we stay in contact with them and all of that sort of thing. And then the third group is actually MSU students. So anyone that I know well enough on campus to convince them to bring their students uh, to the garden, they do that. I've been working with a teacher education program for quite a few years. So I see the seniors in their one of their science methods class. They come out for a three hour visit to the 4-H Children's Garden and learn about it and what we do and how we teach science there. So we have a full range of ages that come out. Yeah, that's it. It really is is uh, I think something that although we call it a children's garden, it uh, it appeals to the children in you know the child in all of us. And uh, that's exactly right. And that that I think makes it really really special. So there there are a lot of different components of the garden. We've talked about a couple of them, uh, the uh, the the Monet Bridge and. Um, and the pizza garden, but there, there's also a, a pharmacy garden and a science discovery garden. What, what what do those entail? Well, the pharmacy garden is contains plants that are used to make pharmaceuticals. And if you go back in history, almost all of our pharmaceuticals started as plants, in plants, extractions from plants. What we have done is we have focused on plants that are or have been used to treat childhood diseases. So again, trying to make that child plant connection. And so those plants are actually ones that have a little bit more information on the label. And they will say a little bit about how that plant is used or what sort of disease it is used to treat, that sort of thing. So that's what the science, or I mean the uh, pharmacy garden is. The science discovery garden is our attempt to make available hands-on right in front of you some of the research that's going on in the buildings that you can see when you're standing in the garden. So in the plant and soil science bu uh, building, in the plant biology building, um, and a few of those. So we have examples of some of those experiments. Many of them are um, NSF funded experiments and so we're providing some of the broader impact or the community outreach reach component of those gardens. Very, very cool. Very, very exciting. So one of the things that I think people, uh, you know, myself included, don't don't think about uh, when when we go to the children's garden is that it's this really wonderful uh, community uh, asset, community resource that uh, that we get to use and and spend time in and enjoy at at no cost to us. Uh, so how is the how's the 4-H Children's Garden funded? The garden is funded through private donations. So um, many of them. So initially, when the garden was built, and as you go through it, you'll see that there are theme gardens. So we talked about the pizza garden. We talked about the uh, science discovery garden, et cetera. So there was a price tag on that. So if you wanted to sponsor that, it was a, an X number of dollar donation. And then there's a plaque there that has the name of the garden. Um, you're, the donor was able to put a saying on there and then it has the donor's name. So that's so it's all private donations. We don't have very many of those to sell anymore. So now we ask donors to support our programs. We still have a few gardens and, and then to just give to support the overall operation of the gardens. So it's all done with private donations. And if people wanted to to donate to the children's garden, 
or or learn more about some of the programs we've talked about, um, is there a, a website that, that we can direct people to? Yes, the website is 4hgarden.msu.edu. Okay, that's pretty easy. So yep. let me ask you, Norm, um, what what caused you to become involved in the children's garden? Well, I'm originally from Michigan. I'm originally, I went to MSU. I have three degrees from MSU. And my first job out of here was at New Mexico State University. And while I was working there, there was a program that was developed by White Sands Missile Range, where the, the story is they had scientists and engineers that were waiting for their clearances to be able to do what they were going to do. And they had the idea of connecting them up with schools and, and assisting the teachers. And it was called a uh, science advisor in the classroom. Well, then they connected up with the university and talked to them. And I, it sounded interesting to me. So I started working with a school there as the science advisor for basically plant science. Yeah, a lot of other things, too. And then we started a garden at that school. And then... After about four or five years of doing that, the position here at MSU opened up as curator of the 4-H Children's Garden and assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture. And so I applied for it. It was like the my dream job come true. And so I've been here now for 23 years in this position. Oh, that's wonderful. I, uh, As a person who, um, who was born at Sparrow Hospital and has never really drifted very far away from from our campus. Uh, I, uh, I I just so appreciate the the assets that the university brings to to our community and our region that really uh, make you know make Lansing such a, a wonderfully livable place. And uh, and the Children's Garden uh, you know ranks up there with with the Wharton Center and, and our athletic programming and and other things that. Uh, that regardless of your age or your interests, um, there's really something for everybody on our campus. And uh, and the children's garden is one of those things that really spans across ages. Although, as I said, although we call it a children's garden, it really speaks to the children and all of us. And uh, and I enjoy getting over there with, with my kids and, uh, and nieces and nephews. And uh, I find myself having as much fun as they are. So it's a uh, it's a wonderful thing. I ha I have one story there that I think you'll appreciate. So the we we say that it is the children's garden, as you said. Um, if you read our mission statement, it actually says that it's to provide a place of enrichment and delight for children of all ages. And the youngest future Spartan that I've ever met out there, because every the other thing you need to know is. Every single group that comes through understands clearly that I bleed green. I have, this is where I was, I was never intended to go to any other school and I'm not planning on leaving here. So anyway, um, the youngest future Spartan I ever met out there was three days old and uh, mom and dad were out there with their new baby and not the oldest, but the oldest cool story is um, I came out into the garden one day and there was a party, a birthday party going on in the creation station. And so I looked, there were balloons up and stuff. And as I looked, I just had to walk over there. And it was a woman who, it was her 95th birthday. And when asked what she wanted to do for her birthday, she said, I want to go to the children's garden. And so she was there with about a half a dozen other 90-ish year old friends and then some younger family um, and so that's the the age range that we span on every week of the year. So it's really, really cool. And she was a Spartan as well. So that's very, very special. So Norm, I'll, I'll wrap up with uh, with what I hope is kind of a fun question. And that is what's your maybe two questions. First, what, what's your favorite part of the children's garden? Oh, that's a tough one because I like it all. Um, probably. Well, there's two things. I love the pizza garden. But the other one that's there is um, there's a garden called the Milk, Meat, and Wool Garden. And what it is, there's a, a sheep statue there. And so kids can sit on it because everything in the garden is designed to be interactive. Um, what I tell my college students, and I'm, it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but not that much, is so I'm usually sitting on the sheep while I'm talking to them. And I tell them that what I'm trying to do what I want them to do is I want them to come out there before they graduate 
and get their picture taken on the sheet. Now I've told them in this part I'm working on that um, I'm trying to make that a graduation requirement. So anyway, I just think everyone should get out there. So that's that's those are a couple of my favorite. And my favorite plant in the garden is there's a plant called the sensitive plant. And when you touch the leaves of it, it closes up. And so it has action and activity and kids just, that is the number one favorite kid plant in the garden. So it's my favorite plant too. Well, Norm, you, uh, you, you, you stole my last question, which was what's your favorite plant? So, uh, <laughs> so in addition to being a great uh, uh, professor of horticulture, you're, you're also a, a great intuitive. So um, congratulations on that. But oh, thank you. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. It's been a, uh, a real pleasure learning about the 4-H Children's Garden. Um, as, as we've discussed, it's, uh, it's really a garden for children of all ages. And uh, yeah, I know that in my own experience, my, uh, my three kids have all had their picture taken on the sheep. Although I'm not sure that I have, so so maybe I need to get over that, get over there and check that box as well. But uh, that's probably true. But I will uh, I will look look forward to uh, to seeing you when I'm over there, and uh, and thank you again. And let's uh, one one more time uh, give people that website so that they can get more information on the children's garden. Okay, the website is 4hgarden.com msu.edu. Well, and uh, wrapping up today, our, our guest is Dr. Norm Lowndes, uh, the uh, curator of the 4-H Children's Garden and associate professor in the Department of Horticulture at Michigan State University. Norm, thanks so much for spending time with us today. Thanks so much for having me.